making a bit of uh, hi everyone um welcome today thanks a lot for coming along i'm not sure just looking at the uh, list of participants names i think uh lots if not uh, most of you um have been here on the previous two days so whether you need me to go again um through the helpful hints on slide one if you could just kind of let us know um if you i think actually looking at you have all been here have you before how, how many people have been here before for the first couple of sessions I should have done it the other way around. Has anyone, could anyone tell me if they haven't been here? Um, so I'll, I'll just go through a few helpful hints and details about the challenge. Anyone new today? Oh, thanks, Ethan. Um, well, so that everyone else doesn't uh, get too bored of all of the stuff I've been saying every morning, I'll just run quickly for Ethan. Um, and anyone else who then arrives um, who hasn't been here the first uh, couple of days is that basically everyone's mics are switched off by default um, just so that um, there's no kind of background noises or feedback uh, that get that gets in the way and just really to say uh, thanks so much for coming um, everyone again um, today uh, we've got Keisha Bradley the engineer and educator Keisha Bradley uh, delivering the um, the webinar and she's going to be kind of helping you come up with your ideas for the project and I know yesterday on uh, on Tanya's session a lot of you were kind of very keen to start getting into exactly what your ideas for the projects were and and what Keisha's going to be helping us with is just general um, how to think creatively and how creative problem solving um, can help and hopefully um, will help you um, come up with a really good idea for your project. Uh, don't worry yesterday if you missed uh, Tanya's fantastic um, session on how to prepare for a make, um, or in fact, Stefan's um, brilliant session from day one, where he kind of outlined a lot of the ideas and theories behind IoT. Um, you, you'll find through our website, www.seras.org.uk, that um, Michael has, has really kindly put those videos of the sessions up there. Um, and it, you'll also find a way to access the slides uh, that Stefan and uh, Tanya presented during their sessions. Um, if just quickly, um, I'm, I, I, I've got some new chat messages. Oh, thanks, Michael. Yeah, there's our website, seras.org.uk. Um, then, um, Iram, you can't hear. I am speaking. Um, everyone else can hear me, I think. Um, Iram, all I can suggest, maybe Michael might be able to help you, but maybe just try and log on again. Um, and, and basically, of course, what we're doing is the challenge here. And um, I, I, from all the chat and everything yesterday, I think lots of people are really kind of energized by the challenge and really want to participate in it. Uh, so just to reiterate, rather than going through the whole thing again, but you, you know, you've heard it all before, is that is that we're looking to creative solutions and innovative creative solutions to kind of problems in your immediate environment uh, that, you're, that you can solve and um, through kind of designing a solution um, with this. You know, we absolutely understand that um, not everyone has all the kit and all the ele electronics, especially during lockdown with them. So that there is, you know, there's no problem at all. You don't have to just send something in that is, uh, you know, that is a pure technical solution. You know, if you want to send a video of the kind of, of the kind of ideas you've got and how it works and how you know it's going to be an iot themed creative design and we just really want to show kind of how it works and really get stuck in through whatever it is through some artwork a video or however you want to do it how your design and how your solution would actually work and we'll be putting a form up um on the uh website next week and on the on our google doc channel um so that you know you can tell us a bit um, all around your idea and how experienced you are. So um, another couple of questions that came in yesterday was, you know, whether you need to be a really experienced maker or if it's a problem on the other hand, if you're a really experienced maker. Neither are, we want to be as inclusive as possible. And in the form we put out next week, you'll get, kind of get the opportunity to tell us a bit about your experience. So um, enough of that, all those kind of details are there for you to look at. And we're delighted if you've got any more questions, 
uh, to, to help explain anything else. Um, if I could just say again, I'm just going to put into chat uh, the online form that does work today, I think, and we'd really appreciate it if people could fill it out. And you will need to do that to join the competition. And there will, I'm afraid, be a kind of a follow up post questionnaire at the end of next week um, to see how you found it all and uh, and and how it's affected your attitudes to IoT and making and everything. Um, so um, after um, after all that, if I can just then, um, so there's the questionnaire. Um, I will hand you over to Keisha. So um, this is Keisha Bradley. So she is an engineer and educator and is going to help you come up with good ideas and creative solutions uh, to your problems. Over to you, Keisha. Thanks. Yes. So welcome, welcome, and thank you for having me. Um, I, my, my, like um, Richard said, my background's in engineering, um, and I'll take you a bit through creative problem solving. But first, I'd really like to know what you took away from yesterday, so I can understand like your your starting point. I did get to see a bit of Tanya's sessions, but just in the chat, if you can go ahead and tell me um, a few things that you took away from yesterday, and then that gives you a, a few seconds to look at that form at the same time. So if you can go ahead and just pop into the chat what you gained from yesterday. Um, and then I'm also going to ask what your expectations are for today. So if you want to go ahead and, and answer those two questions. So three, maybe two or three things from yesterday and um, what you hope to get from today's creative problem solving session. Well, and then I'll get my uh, computer set up at the same time, if that's OK. So, you know, sorry, you're going to see my computer um, go over a few times while I look at your chat. Um, Well, I like that. Technology is accessible at all levels and only limited by imagination. That is great because we'll talk a lot about imagination today. Um, IoT tech is accessible. Yeah, there's lots of different ways. I felt that. Yeah, these are good. Expensive or inexpensive. Diversity of sensors. Oh, there's so many different types of sensors. It's great. Di lots of different ways to connect things. Myrad of hardware to use. You're not blocked by experience or cost. That's absolutely true. Um, and that's really important in what we'll talk about today. Even if you are really experienced, sometimes it's really good to go back to the basics and just try things out. Um, that's great. Perfect. So if you can start in the chat telling me what you'd like to get from today's creative problem solving, just because I will try to adjust my uh, presentation to what your expectations are so that we can make sure that you're gaining whatever it is that you would like to from this session. So if you can just go ahead and pop in um, a few things. Inspired, oh, I'll try. So while you're doing that, just a bit about me, um, and I'll pop this up because it's annoying seeing the repetition of screens. So a bit about me, my background's in engineering, and I went to the university, or not a university, it, it is a university, but it doesn't have that in its name. It's Rose Holman Institute of Technology in the States. It's a, uh, just an engineering school, so everyone there, they were all engineers, which is a bit of a problem in itself, and we'll talk about why that is later. Um, but one thing that they did do is everything that, from day one, it was hands-on learning, so we always got to get our hands on um, materials and experiment and try new things. And that was great about where I went to school. And I worked in many different jobs in manufacturing, research and development, design, um, lean and six sigma, which just means that we try to take all of the little mistakes out of the manufacturing process and make things really nice and pristine and um, uh, minimize how much we throw away, which um, a lot of what uh, Tanya talked about yesterday with Raspberry Pis, those are actually used in manufacturing um, to help 
with those processes and to automate um, um, how we make things so that we have less scrap. Um, what else did I work in? Uh, manufacturing, research development, design, testing. I did a lot of testing of um, acceleration sensors that would um, make your airbag and your car go off. But the most interesting job that I had was, um, I'm going over here. The most interesting job that I had was with Delphi. And Delphi make wires and connectors. So wire, everyone knows what a wire is. I have one charging uh, my laptop right now. And connectors are the bits of pieces that are at the end of the wire that connect it to something else. So it might be literally the, the, the plug, or it might be a USB, or in your, your car, it's the kind of the JT connectors. And so that's what they produce. And they did wires of all different sizes. So Microsoft microscopic all the way to big massive chunky cable type wires um, so that's what they did and I remember on my first day when I when they're introducing my project they were telling me that I was going to be helping to create the system for wireless charging in cars now while that sounds really cool there's a lot of nuances so to doing that and what what they do in engineering is they send off this problem to a consultancy firm and that consultancy firm comes up with the absolute best case scenario of an invention or of a, a solution to that problem and what that means is it's also the most expensive version of the solution and it has the most fragile part so even in transportation you're already losing um, some of your materials because they're so fragile or instead of using maybe um, aluminum which is a lot cheaper they're using copper which is really expensive and so they were showing me this invention and, and it was a copper wire that they were using to charge the electric car um, and it was so expensive that they wouldn't dream of making it so that, but, but they were trying anyway because electric cars are the future and we need a way where we don't have a wire going from your house into your car because that creates a lot of problems around tripping hazards or if an animal chews through it, what will happen to them? Will they be electrocuted? Um, there are all sorts of problems with that. So I was in charge of, uh, of seeing how they were going to connect the copper wire inside of the um, electric charging, um, the wireless charging unit, sorry. And my, my first thought was, why is this wire so expensive? And they said, oh, well, we don't produce copper wires. I was like, well, that seems a bit strange. You produce wires, but you're not going to produce the wire for this car. And then I asked, well, and why does it have to be copper? Oh, well, that's what the, um, the design said to use, and it's the most efficient. It works really well, and we, don't, um, we need a certain type of voltage that will only work on copper wires to go through it. And so it didn't really make sense to me because my background is mechanical engineering and they were all electrical engineers so I just went with it but then a couple weeks went by and I had a bit of time on my hands and I decided um, I wanted to go ahead and test it just because I had this extra time and so I tested one of the wires that they made in-house um, in the system so I, I used lots of different links lots of different diameters of wire um, and what I found out was that actually the wires that they made did work um, they weren't as efficient but what it meant is that if you gave up on some of that efficiency more people would be able to buy the product because it would bring the price down and the company was going to save millions of dollars each year producing this wireless charger um, and, and when you save money that way, that means you can hire more people, so there are more jobs created. The people that you do hire, you can get pay a better wage to because you have a higher um, profit margin. Um, and then you want more people driving electric cars and to have wireless chargers because that's, in the end, better for the environment, even if you do sacrifice on efficiency overall. It becomes a product for the masses rather than a product for a few niche collectors, if that makes sense. So my idea wasn't original, um, and it wasn't really a stretch of the imagination, and it really came out of a place of not understanding how the technology worked in the first place. So that's my bit about creative problem solving and how where ideas can come from and how you can save millions from a simple idea, and, and that's a bit about my background. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to read a bit about what you'd like. Um, 
and then we'll get started. Nothing is difficult. You can be creative and willing and expensive. Um, don't have them. Okay, so now we're getting into the ideas. How to harness creative process, that's great, we'll cover that. What's the scope of what we could achieve at home with little or no prior electronic experience? Perfect, Andrew, I really like that. I don't have a project idea yet looking for inspiration. Sometimes you have ideas and find it hard to follow through. Ho oh, ho, that's me, I will help you with that today. Um, when a problem has multiple solutions, when do you know that a solution to a problem is the right solution? Ooh, I'm gonna write that one down because I've not included that in my presentation, but it's a really good question. So how do we know the right solution? How do we, it, remind me if I forget, um, know the right solution. That's a very good question. Um, I would like to try and shake off the boundaries to help me think more creative. That's great, that'll be perfect. Um, sometimes we have ideas and find it hard to follow through. These are all great. So the one thing I'm going to add to my presentation is how do we know the, it's the right solution? Um, and if I don't cover that, please remind me at the end or even in the middle if you think it's the right place where I should cover it. Just go ahead and pop that question in there. Um, Richard and Michael, is it okay? Because once I go in full, I won't be able to see um, questions come up. Can you just give me little prods along the way? Yeah, that's no problem. Happy to do that. Perfect. So let's dive in. Enough of me rambling on about my experiences. Um, so I'm Kisha Bradley. You know me, and we know a bit about what you'd like from today. Um, I gather you're excited to, to get those ideas together from um, what I've seen in the chat. So just a little note. Bef as You don't need it straight away, but um, soon enough, you're going to need some of these materials. Please make sure you check with an adult um, what materials you're allowed to use because I wouldn't want you to use um, gold plated paper if that's a thing. But what you'll absolutely need is something to draw with. So some type of drawing utensil, whether that be a pencil or a pen or a felt tip marker. Um, and then you'll need some type of paper. It can be scrap paper. It can be printer paper. Any type of paper that you have um, with the permission of an adult you can use. Then optional, as many of these items that you can gather, and they don't have to be these exact items, but you need some type of maybe tin foil, maybe some string, tape, scissors, glue. Um, if you wanted to, you could just get sticks from the garden. It doesn't matter, just little bits and pieces. And if you can't do it right now, um, you can wait. And you can, there will be opportunities where we're, we're going to take some time to think of ideas later on that you can gather some of these bits and pieces. So no worries about getting it right this second. Um, next. So what you can expect, this is a safe space. Um, please explore ideas. Give yourself time to think. Don't rush into anything. You don't, there's no reason to rush. Um, and take some of these ideas along with you um, and give yourself time to think after this as well. Try something new. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Mistakes are a good thing. If I didn't ask that silly question, then um, they wouldn't have saved millions of dollars. Um, it will help you find new approaches to thinking. Um, and then understand where you come from, what your own culture is, um, and, and how that impacts the ideas that you generate. And, and think about the restrictions that might place on your ideas and who you might be able to draw in to help you generate some of your own ideas. And this what else box, um, just when you, we uh, publish it, I'll make sure I add in how do we know what the right solution is to that, to that last box. Right. So today we will go through a bit. I'll talk about what it means to be creative. I'll talk about what problem solving is, and then we'll get hands on. So I want to know what your ideas are. You'll have time to, to run through all the ideas and, and literally just brain dump on a piece of paper. We're going to draw those ideas and, and think a bit more about how they would actually come to life. So follow through on your idea. And we're going to build one. We're going to build the ugliest invention you've ever seen. And it'll be your very first prototype of your idea. And then we're going to reflect. We're going to think about why we came up with the idea, how it could be improved. Is it the right solution? And if it's not the right solution, um, how can we get it one step closer to becoming the right solution? Um, so that's, that is the name of the game. That's what we're doing today. 
So, creative. I looked up online and they told me it was Lexico by Oxford. So Oxford tells me that being creative is relating to or involving the use of imagination or original ideas to create something. I completely disagree. I do not think that's right at all. Um, I don't think there's anything original about creativity. It does not have to be unique. Um, and um, if it is unique, it's probably happened by accident and we can't control that. So things like sticky notes. Sticky notes were invented out of an accident. They were not, no one intended to create the sticky note. It was just a happy um, um, circumstances that it, it was a complete accident and it could have been a disaster. So nothing original about actually being creative. Our ideas all have a starting point. They are born out of ideas that we've had in the past, ideas that we've heard from other people, our own experiences, our culture, um, other innovations, so other things that other people have created, and we think, oh, we can, we can improve that, we can make it a bit better. So just remember that when you walk into the room, you come with a unique set of experiences, and what seems like common sense to you will be completely insane and imaginative and inventive to the person sitting next to you. So that's creativity. Um, if you have any thoughts about that or if you disagree with what I think, go ahead and um, let us know in the chat. I'm, I'm always interested to hear what other people think about what creativity is because it is so vast and vague. And then problem solving is not always straightforward. So I love the picture of the strings. Um, on the right hand side of my screen um, because the top line is just a nice neat piece of string but it's seldom that we see a straight piece of string. Problem solving is really loopy and crazy and it goes back on itself and then it finds its way again and and it's always like that. There's never really an end point. Um, we're always innovating and creating and changing and um, solving new problems or, or solving problems that a new invention has created. So like plastic. Plastic was game changing when it was created and look at us now it's just another problem and and we're in this endless loop of trying to find the way we should be doing things so problem solving you define the problem the challenge or the barrier you come up with loads of different ideas and then you select you narrow down those ideas and usually the way that this is done is by going out there asking people questions figuring out what people actually need um, and doing it in a way where they're not just telling you what to hear, you're actually getting down to what the ground, like the, the base of the problem actually is. Um, and you do that throughout this entire process. So even when you're defining the problem, when you're generating ideas, when you're evaluating and selecting ideas, and then you implement your idea and you see, does it work? How well does it work? What can you do to change it? And this is what I said, we'll get back to how do you know it's the right solution? You don't. You have to test it and you have to keep going back and testing it. Um, and you have to ask the people around you, does it work for you? How much would you pay for it? Okay, you say you'll pay me $50 or 50 pounds for it. Give me the money right now. And if they don't give you the money right now, you know they're lying to you. So just keep going back and asking. Um, a great book to read uh, to, to help you get down to that, that question asking is The Mom Test. I love that book, The Mom Test. So problem solving, not straightforward. But here's a, a nice structure for you to move through as you um, be solve problems. Is that all right? Is um do we have any questions or am I going too fast? I don't hear anything, so I will move on. So here are three examples of inventions that sorry out. there just came one before you go on, yeah. there's one quick question just came up from Bonnie saying what was the name of the book? Oh the mom test. So mom as in your mother so the mom test, um, right. because, yeah. Sounds good. I'll see if I can find a link for it. Oh, perfect. Thank you. It's a really short and quick read. I think I bought it and read it in a weekend. Um, very easy to read and actionable. So I love actionable things. So I just did um, an internet search to find some really cool inventions that I think um, we're really great in their time and they came from a, a, um, a necessity and the people who thought of the ideas they didn't it wasn't just out of blue they have great histories and I would urge you to go look into each of these people's histories and see how the the their experiences and what they went through in life led up, led up to these inventions um, I won't dive too much into that here 
Um, but nowadays, so we have the first one, the traffic light. There are definitely ways that the traffic light could be improved or ways that we could use the traffic light that would be better for the environment or could contribute to maybe like driverless cars um, and how internet things could could be involved in that. And I, I don't want to give you ideas, so I'm trying really hard not to spill ideas all over you because I want you to come up with your own unique ideas that aren't, not unique, none of our ideas are unique, but that aren't influenced too much by me. So Traffic Light by Garrett Morgan. This is the first traffic light um, and it came from him sitting in traffic. He had lots of other skills and experience that helped him, but he was sitting in traffic, he saw an accident, and he thought we shouldn't have to have a traffic warden at the intersection to prevent accidents. What's that we can improve it? So right. mobile air conditioning. Again, Fred Jones worked in the automobile industry and he came up with loads of different inventions. And um, the mobile air conditioning unit is one of those. And it was in the United States when you have to drive really far with perishable food items. Um, that's not good for business. So someone came to him and asked, you know, we want to be able to, to deliver our food further. Can you come up with something for us to keep everything cool? But we know that air conditioning is not the best thing for the environment. Um, are there ways that Internet of Things could help us improve um, air conditioning? And again, I have ideas coming out that I don't want to spoil for you. And my absolute favorite is the shoe laster. And I will go into a bit more detail. So Jan worked in, um, he, he, he worked in and learned how to make shoes. Um, and there was only, at the time, there was only one place in the States that um, you could, that they manufactured shoes. And I think that was, in, I think it was Massachusetts. Um, and there was this union of very skilled hand workers. And they had figured out a way to make the bottom of the shoe um, with machinery. And they figured out how to make the top of the shoe with machinery, but they couldn't find machinery to connect the two. And so these very skilled workers had a, a bit of a monopoly. They knew that they could hike their prices way up and no one could do anything about it because that's the only way that we could finish making the shoes. So it became very expensive and one person could only make 50 pairs a day. And that meant that shoes were only for the elite. Not everyone could wear shoes. So Jan worked for years and he, he kept trying to get investment and no one would invest with him because they thought no one could create something that can do what the human fingers can do in this very skilled job. But he kept working at it anyway. And he came, finally came up with an invention that would connect the top and the bottom of the shoe. And you went from making 50 pairs of shoes a day to 700 pairs of shoes a day. So you can see how this completely changed the game because not only can you make more shoes, the shoes are cheaper so that more people can wear them. And that opens up opportunities all across society when more people are able to wear shoes because now they can get to work faster. There are less, fewer health issues. Um, so that, that I did go into more detail because I really enjoyed that story. Um, but you can think about shoes and how fast fashion has changed the way we, we wear shoes and then perhaps how Internet of Things or, or technology can um, improve our relationship with shoes or even how our shoes themselves can help the environment. It's in their endless possibility, so I don't want to frame your ideas too much. Now we're going to dive into activities. So before we go, I'll, I'll give you the structure of, of how we're going to go through our ideas. Um, I will ask you if you'd like an example where we go through it together, um, and then we'll just go for it. So what we're going to do is you're going to list all of your ideas. So you don't have to use traffic light, mobile air conditioning, or shoe laster. If you have another idea that you'd like to work on, that's absolutely fine. This was just a starting point if, if you were struggling a bit. Um, so you're going to list out absolutely everything that comes to mind, no matter how silly or off topic it may seem. And then um, we're going to do a bit of group work. And I won't, I don't want to show too much about the group work because I don't want it to influence your idea phase. And then we're going to select three of our top, we're going to select our top three ideas that we come up with and we're going to draw them. Once you're done drawing, I want you to pick one and then you're going to build it. And that's why you need string, tinfoil, paper, um, cardboard, boxes, cereal boxes, whatever you can come up with. And, and you'll have time to, to collect those. So would you like to go through a very quick example together? To pop into uh, 
Um, the consensus for an example seems to be yes. Yes, okay, an example. So I'm, I don't need this up if I'm doing an example because the example is interactive with yours truly. Um, so the example I'm going to use is your local council, because I don't know where you are all from in the world. So your local council um, has decided to replace all the lighting um, on the footpaths and they and you have to come up with the idea for them. So I want the first step would be to list as absolutely many ideas that you can um, for what you would replace this new lighting with. And so the first thing that comes to my mind is lightsabers. So Star Wars lightsabers. So I imagine that Sheffield City, or that's where I am, Sheffield. Sheffield City Council is going to send every single resident a lightsaber so that when they're on their walks, they, they can hold the lightsaber up and find their way. Sheffield's never going to do that. They're never going to, to go out and give everyone a lightsaber, but that idea might lead to something else. So I'm going to write, that's an idea I'm going to write down. I'm not going to filter any of my ideas. I'm going to write every single thing that, ha that comes to my mind down on the paper. So this one's collaborative. We'll all do it together. Um, so if you can just in the comments come up with the very first thing that came to your mind when I said we need to replace all the lighting. So mine's light. Say, oh, I like glow sticks. So come up with every, every idea. It doesn't matter how silly it seems. Fairy lights. Oh, that's brilliant. Now we're bringing playfulness and happiness to fire. Yeah. Pavement that lights up when you walk on it. Yeah. And so you can start to start to see how these ideas would actually change the way we live our lives and how we approach walks. They'd be more playful. Drones follow people to illuminate them. Different color change. Dance floor. Bioluminescent trees. Uh, pavement that walk, lights up when you dance. So you have to do it at home or else you'll, you'll be in the dark. I love it. Um, colored bullards. Digital glow worms. Glow flies. I love that. Disco lights. So you can see, like, maybe one of these ideas by themselves, some of these ideas are, are, you know, perfectly acceptable, and some of them turn lights off. Yeah, don't have lights at all. Digital campfires that light up as you walk past them. Uh, wearable technology, light up shoes. But you could see how you could spend a good three to five minutes just listing all your ideas, and you might have some gems that come, or you might have some ideas that if you combine it with another idea would work really well. So then what we would do is we would share our ideas and see, is there any, you know, I have all these ideas in my head and I know they're there. It might take me 10 years to actually come to a solution, but we're going to speed up that process a bit. We're not going to take 10 years. But what we would do is we would share. We would share our ideas. We would go to cafes. We would, when we're hanging out with our friends, we would share. And, and they might come up with ideas. And then eventually there might be some um, synergy or we might end up just going on our on our own um, to create an idea. So is that helpful of what I mean of um, the idea phase? So you've come up with the idea, you share, and then we narrow it down to three. So let's I'm just gonna pick three random ones and then we're gonna so we can turn the lights off, we can have a disco light or bioluminescent trees. So I pick three ideas. We would draw those ideas. So we get out our paper and pen and we draw those ideas. So for bioluminescent trees, I'm just going to do this really fast. Um, actually, I can do the, um, there's a drawing, isn't there, where I can, yeah, there's a whiteboard so, t-shirt. Yeah, so we're going to all as a group work on this bioluminescent tree. So try I think you can all try to draw on this so some can someone try to start drawing our bioluminescent tree um, I'll, I'll, I'll have to open access to the whiteboard oh, okay. so please keep it appropriate um, family friendly sorry this is a bit ad-lib I didn't know I was gonna um, have you all drawing together that should be working now Okay, so does everyone want to try? Oh, I think I have to select a tool. 
There we go. So I want to see some bioluminescent trees. Remember, you're working together. Um, so we've got some, a few things of trees. OK, let's stop drawing trees. Now label. I want you to label and think about and put it in the comments, maybe, so that we don't have too much on the tree. Um, what materials do you need? What inputs are there? So what information do you, does the tree need to receive in order to light up? And then once it's, what output does it have? So that would be the light. Um, what materials do you need? How much money might you need? Whose approval? Who's interested? Um, over time, then you might also start to think, who's allergic to this tree? What animals um, might it, might, what animals might we get more of? And what animals might it harm? Um, so start to think about all those different parts. Uh, do you need the base of the tree or is there a way for us just to have the leafy part? Could you hang the tree upside down so it's not taking up as much ground space? What What is involved? What machinery do I need to plant the tree? What kind of soil does it need? Um, how much moisture do you have to water it on a regular basis? Is it worth putting in an irrigation system? Do you see like my brain just keeps going? I didn't know that I was going to have to think about um, luminescent trees today. So questions are coming to my mind out of nowhere. Um, let's see. I want to see some of what you're saying. Solar. Um, also a way to diminish light pollution. Do, 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 do. The toys have lights down the fibers. The trees, branches are, are that. Um, I like this. It's solar. It's lit up. Light levels are low, so you're going to need some kind of sensor to know that the light levels are low. The chlorophyll in the tree lights up. So I'm getting some more um, detail about what our invention or idea is going to start to look like. Um, sensor lights, that camera that light up and capture an activity when there um, some activity to capture any illegal activity. Oh, I'm sure the councils would love that. Um, what about the trees in the summer versus the winter? Gabrielle says that's great. Yep, definitely consider that. Light up the trunk, not the branches. That's a fun idea. I, I, it's so you can start to see. Not everyone's going to have the same ideas, but when we all work collectively, actually the idea really does start to make sense. Like bioluminescent tree, tree seemed crazy before, but now it is actually kind of seeming like it could happen. Um, does that make sense? Is that starting to make sense? So we've drawn our picture. We'll pretend that we've done three. And I'm going to share my screen with you again. Sorry. Um, so we'll pretend that we've done three ideas so that we can you can get started on your own. Share screen. Share. Right. Hide that. Right. OK. So. We are here. So I want you. Oh, so we've um, we've shared it with others. We've drawn it and then you're, we would build a prototype. So we get materials around our house and we would build something that's really, really ugly and not actually it doesn't actually work. Um, and maybe the trunk's made out of a, a toilet paper tube. But when we're describing it to people, we would say, and this is our tree trunk, and it lights up. We wouldn't say, and this is a toilet paper tube, and it lights up. So you would, you would really get quite theatrical, and you would say, this piece of junk is amazing, and you will love it. So that's how, we would, that's how we're going to approach this. Okay, so the very first thing I want you to do is just to spend about – three minutes um, and if I start to see that you are done um, then we'll slow down but in real life if you were to go out and do this on your own I would absolutely say five minutes set the timer do not step away from that piece of paper until you've spent a full five minutes even if the last ideas are just hardly coming out you want to really take that time to just let your brain just dump on the paper because you don't know what's going to happen in that last minute or two so if you can go ahead, think, think of what your, your problem is, um, and then take about three minutes to list as many as, as you can dream. And I will see you back at 2.44. Is that OK? So just take three minutes to list as many ideas as you can.
and we'll get back to it at 244. Keisha Cherry's just asked if you have any suggestions for how to kind of think of the problem to address. Um, if, if you already, so I listed those three. So if you're having trouble coming up with an idea, I would just choose one of these and go with it and just list out any ideas that you come up with. And it's literally just the first thing that comes to your mind. It doesn't have to even be related. If for some reason, when you think of air conditioning, you think of fire, write down fire. Um, there's no filtering here. Just whatever comes in your brain, write it down. Um, so if, you, if you've if you not come up with an idea today if, if, or a problem that you want to address, just use one of these three problems. Um, otherwise, just give yourself time. Um, and, and later on, I'll show you some examples. I'll pull up now. So, and the problem doesn't even have to you can kind of create a problem like what was the most annoying thing about getting up today? What was the most annoying thing about your morning? What caused you the biggest problem or challenge? That could be your problem. Um, what, uh, so coffee machine. I set my coffee machine to go off at 630, but actually I decided to have a 15 minute lie in and now my coffee is too cold. That's a that's the problem. It's really annoying, and it changes my day because now I have to microwave my coffee, and it doesn't taste as nice. Um, what else could there be? Cereal. You ran out of cereal in the morning. That's really annoying. You you forgot to go the night before. How could you solve that problem using Internet of Things? And they don't. Your your problems don't always have to be world changing. And sometimes it's just the practice of coming up with something really simple and just working on it, and then it just takes practice to so just come up with something that is important to you or start with one of these problems that I've put up here. Um, I'll make this bigger. Or a problem that you already thought of coming in the challenge and just list all of your ideas. And I realize I was talking over it, and I like it to be silent when I'm coming up with my ideas. So if no one says any otherwise, I might give you till 45. And, and Sakita, Gabrielle said that she tends to think of problems that aren't really IoT friendly. Anything can be IoT friendly. Um, let me get this down so I can see the chat. I wouldn't worry about that. I would just come, you know, think of your problem and then start listing your ideas. Um, and then maybe at the end, we can talk about how IoT can be involved in that. Because I do the same thing. I'm like, oh, how can I involve IoT? I really struggled with it, Richard, didn't I, when we were going through this at first. And then when I did an internet search and I found those three ideas, these ones, um, I start, it, it started to just, when I was doing my list of, of ideas, it's, it just started to happen. I didn't intend for it to, but so for traffic lights, and if you're talking about electric cars, how can you use the internet? You know, there. I don't want to give too much away. Um, there will be synergies there. And we can address some of that at the end if you've not come up with IoT by the end of this, we will. I will do some Q&A. Sorry, I will stop talking, Emma. We'll do another minute. In the chat, can you start to let me know that you're done by raising your hand? Or I
you just let me know if you are done by raising your hand in the chat. I'll turn my sound off so it doesn't annoy. Yes, Aaron, um, you should have written down as many ideas as, as you can at this point. Um, I'm sorry I talked over it a bit too much. So I think most most of you are, um, are ready to move on. And that's another thing is there should always be a, a point where we draw it to a close. So we're going to stop writing our ideas down now and you can always continue this exercise after and I would really encourage you to, to keep practicing this, do this all the time. Um, so if we just move on, the next step now that you've written all your ideas is that we're going to share. So in just a second Michael is going to be kind and break us into breakout rooms and you'll share all of your ideas so list out every single idea that you came up with with your group unless there are any inappropriate ones please leave those out um and are there any ideas from others in your group that would combine well with your own and it may not even solve the, the same problem but there might be some aspect of their idea that could help yours and then when you're done sharing your ideas i want you to pick two or three ideas that you would like to move forward with and these are the ones that you're going to draw so in a second, Michael is going to break you into your breakout rooms. You're going to spend five minutes just listing out all your ideas to your group mates. So try to be mindful of how much time that you're spending on each person. Um, you might be able to take some ideas from your group mates. And then I would like you to pick two or three ideas that you would like to move forward with. Is that OK? Can I just check what size groups would you like? Um, three to five people. So maybe, yeah, maybe three or four people in each group, Michael, if that's possible. Okay. I'll make, um, yeah, okay. I'll get to see what I can do. I'll leave the option for people to move between groups as well. In case anybody yeah. wants to be with somebody in particular. I don't know any particular friendship groups or things, so it's been hard to do this virtually. But Okay, I'll okay, do that so we'll, now. We'll be back at 2.56. Uh, Everybody should be coming back now. Great. So um, let me just let me just make sure before you start again. Let me make sure I realized after doing that that I had no idea how to end breakout groups. <sighs> uh, I practiced how to do it, but not to. Oh, okay, good. It looks it like, like yeah. Back. Oh, good. So I know in our group we had a bit of technical issues at first, but it looks like other groups may have had a. a better time of it so i realize that we are going to run over a bit and i do apologize um so i'm going to rush us through the making part and then i'll show you the reflection questions and then we'll leave time to for for questions if that's okay so if you could um um three your three ideas and draw them out really quick um and i mean really really quickly so that we can have time for questions at the end. Um, 
And your idea should just label maybe some of the hint at some of the materials you might use, um, what inputs. So do you need lights, a light sensor, um, and what outputs do you need a screen to display anything? Um, do you need some kind of information, some open source data? Um, so just draw those ideas, and I'm going to give you one minute. So these are going to be the worst scribbles you've ever done. We need to get Just the whiteboard up there, my kind of thing. Sorry? Let's get the whiteboard up there, shall we then? Um, if these are their, all of their individual ideas, so they might be too different yeah, to, to do together. Um, so just really quick, maybe just draw one of your ideas, even if normally I'd have to draw at least three. Oh, they were having a great discussion. Oh, so draw those ideas. Sensor. Sorry, Richard. You had a rain sensor there. Oh, yes. I think that they're saying what kind of sensors they're using, but I want them to draw the diagrams. This is for themselves to go forward. Um, and it would be great if once there's a way, Richard, where you can have people um, share their draw. Where do you want us to draw? On your scrap paper. So use your scrap paper and your, your pen or pencil or marker um, to draw out your ideas. I'm really sorry about the dogs barking in the background. Um, so use your scrap so paper. I could, yeah, I, I could turn on everyone's cameras for a minute so they could show drawings, or alternatively, we could give them access to a whiteboard, maybe. Could we, Michael? Um, yeah, I, I whiteboard's the possible. That might be the easiest rather than individual cameras, but. Yeah, well, I was just thinking, so this is just for their own, so they don't have to share, but if they would like oh, to okay. send, um, if, if you if you want to share later or afterward, you can share some of your drawings after. Um, so draw on your own paper. And then, so pick, what you would do then is you would pick one of your um, drawings and you would build it. So create a prototype. And it, like I said before, it can be really ugly. Pick materials with the help of an adult um, using your tinfoil, paper, scissors, string, tape, glue, whatever you have around you. And it should be ugly. It should be really ugly. So I'll give you an, two minutes because we're over time now. Two minutes to do that. So 3.03. I might make the um, bioluminescent tree. making the bioluminescent tree. You can see how ugly it is. I just stuck a bowl of tin foil for your leaves, and then I like the idea of having some lights on the trunk as an option. So maybe 
in the summertime you just have the trunk lit up in the winter time you might have both um, and so you have your luminescent leaves and then you have an option of some luminescent bark um, the soil probably has to be quite special to light up my trees um, my leaves and then you would use a sensor to detect how much daylight there is and then I think it'd be quite useful if um, if there's some type of way to know how much energy um, so that's how you would do you would just show your idea and use as much language as you can to describe your idea and think about who it is and so by I'm really sorry I, that we've gone over I, um, I, I, I want to live in, I want to live in a world that has those trees you want to live in a world that has those trees so you can see <laughs> how really ugly and simple my very first prototype is and each prototype would get uh, slightly better and use maybe better materials as you go along but you can see that it doesn't have to start with the most expensive materials because then you're just um, you might be wasting your your money and time on something that doesn't work so so you built it I, sh I showed and tell so I realized that we don't have time to go into breakout rooms again but you might go show and tell with a friend or a family member and give them as much detail as possible but think about their starting point how much do they know about Internet of Things and are they interested so you might think about that for your judges but then also think about, um, sorry, I'm going to shut the door. Um, our neighbors are doing some handiwork. So you might, um, or you're, you're a five-year-old child. They won't know anything about Internet of Things potentially. So you might use a different language with them um, to describe your idea. So show and tell to a family member or a friend and use the detail, as much detail as you can uh, for them. And then you can reflect on that. You can reflect on what feedback they gave you. You can think about what issues you drew on to come up with your ideas, um, what hobbies and interests inspired you. I want you to think about what you enjoyed the most. Did you enjoy coming up with the ideas, drawing, prototyping, and why? Was it because you have lots of experience in drawing, and so that came really easily to you? Or was it the idea phase because actually you really like improv, and so that, that process of coming up with ideas on the, on the, on the go it's easy because you've practiced it a lot. Or do you like prototyping because you have loads of years of experience playing with Lego and so building comes really easily because of the practice that you've had in the past. Um, and then what parts of culture influenced your ideas um, and the prototype and how could a team member or a friend or someone with different life experiences change or improve um, your idea? And then, um, so I want you to go and I want you to do that one on your own. I'm just, sorry, my, there we go. Additional resources. So these are three things, and I'll share the links with Michael to share with you. Um, where good ideas come from. It's just a YouTube video going through what I said in a slightly different way about where ideas come from and how uh, creativity is a process, and sometimes it takes 10 years to come up with an idea. Invisible Women is a great book that talks about all the different problems that this world faces because um, it's centered around men's bodies and around men's lives. So these are really great starting points of problems. So if you're really struggling to come up with an idea, um, then this book is a fantastic place because it just lists loads of problems. And then um, I would urge you to watch sci-fi and really creative and playful and crazy movies because you don't know what ideas might come out of that and just have playing and having a good time um, is always recommended if you are wanting to start thinking more creatively and I really like Black Panther so I listed that one um, and that's it so I'm sorry we had to rush the end um, I was going to ask you to share maybe three things that you gained um, from this experience from this workshop so if you can stay and, and share a few things, because this will help you moving forward if you're able to share. Um, it, helps, um, it helps you remember what it is that's important about creative problem solving. A lot of ideas. Um, And Michael said, remember that you can always email them at info at .uk for more questions. And then you can also follow them on Twitter at Sarah's underscore skills.
Um, time constraints for idea forming. So yeah, constrain yourself a bit. Give yourself five minute um, increments. That's really good. How to work in a team, really important. Um, working in team and drawing off each other's cultural experiences is crucial. Don't get hung up on the preconceptions, yeah. Relating everyday problems to IoT, that's great. Um, it's a simple step-by-step -step process from finding an idea, so talking about a prototype, a pitch. Yeah, a bit of a pitch, starting to practice. Except the rubbish ideas are valid, they are. Yes, Rachel, they are valid. Other people's problems, yeah. Take those into account. Those are all great. Keep rubbish. <laughs> yes, keep rubbish around so that you can build your ideas. Um, so, thank you uh, for attending. I'll share my details with you so that if you have um, any questions or um, liked what you saw today, um, you can have a way to get in touch with me as well. But I would urge you to go ahead and follow um, Sarah's on Twitter. And I think they have a Facebook page as well. So you can um, get on their Facebook page. Our Facebook page is mostly just Sheffield Robotics page. But if you go to Sheffield Robotics page, you'll see updates. Yeah, OK. So for Sheffield Robotics page, you'll see updates. So if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, it's Kisha underscore Bradley, and I talk about creativity and problem solving a lot on there. And then Instagram, we're at Brightbox Makerspace. And then um, we do events in libraries, so you can always um, message if you'd like an event in your community when we're all allowed to be in person again, because I really miss seeing everyone's faces in person. Were there any questions? Um, is there anything else that I can cover? Great stuff. I think we're done. Kisha, thanks so much. That was that was really, really that was fascinating talk, and I, I'm sure that really did uh, help everybody. Um, it, but has anyone got anything? A, a last kind of question they'd like to put to Kisha before um, she has to go. Just maybe you've had an idea and you just want to quickly check it out with her. Kisha isn't a judge, so don't so don't worry. She can speak a bit more freely with you. I'm still here. I can stay for a minute if people want to ask questions. I just wanted to make sure we got as much squeeze in there because we did run, run over. Sensor. Uh, Zubia asks, is it essential to add a sensor? So slightly tangential as I'm quite outspoken. What if some are a bit more reserved because of how they were conditioned by family, school, or society? How would you help that person speak up their ideas and break through that wall in the team environment? That's a great question. And I think that's why it's so important to come up with the ideas by ourselves first. So, and that's why I didn't tell you you were going to go into groups because I didn't want you to filter your ideas on the basis of someone else was going to hear them. Um, so it's really important that we come up with our, because I was that way. So it's really important to come up with your ideas first. Um, and then, it, I think that beyond that, it's individual by individual basis. So you might have a trusted friend or someone um, that you might share your ideas with. Um, and it doesn't, a team isn't always the best. So you might not always take your, your idea to a team environment. You might work on them yourself. And that's okay too. I don't know if that's answering your question. It's not straightforward, but. Um, so could you, Richard, it says, could you share the link for the questionnaire needed to enter the challenge? So I think they just want oh, to link the form. Absolutely. Thank you very much for suggesting that, Sirhan. That's coming up right away. There it is. Yeah. And I then think, um, is it essential oh, thank you, to you, really. So I just want to say that was really interesting what you said about your strategy for putting together the groups like that, because uh, I've had a couple of comments from people uh, saying that they would wish they had longer in their groups, so they could have set them up from the beginning. But your strategy is actually to put people in just so they can throw out stuff to each other. Pedagogically, that's really interesting. So I can see the value of, of more time in groups or knowing who your group yeah. members are going to be. But I do like also you had a rationale for what you were doing there. That's really interesting. Yeah. I would have loved to spend like 10 minutes on each segment, but yeah, squeeze into an hour as much as we can. 
Um, okay. Someone also asked if they need a sensor in the project idea. So I'll let Richard or Michael answer that question. Well, well Keisha, you're our resident maker. What, what do you think? I mean, really, we're, we're looking for solutions that are kind of IoT themed. Yeah. Um, so do you want my true to the heart engineer answer? Yes. I would say you always, always, always start with the problem. So you start with the problem, the challenge, the barrier, whatever it is, you define it and you come up with all your ideas and then you think out what do you actually need? And you don't think about what technologies or what tools do you need? You think about how, how do you make it function? So I see technology as a tool. It's, it, it's not the answer, if that makes sense. So if your invention or your idea needs a sensor, then it needs a sensor. But if it doesn't need a sensor, it doesn't need a sensor. I, and I know that's not a straightforward answer, but you never want to add a feature just for the sake of adding a feature um, if you want good engineering. But if you want to play and have fun, absolutely add a sensor. There's no harm in just playing and having fun and experimenting with things. I think you should absolutely do that. Um, is that an OK answer? I, I think so, absolutely. Yeah, and we're just looking for kind of IoT themed ideas. You know, yeah. And, and, and we're expecting some really kind of different entries, really. But, yeah. um, you know, but obviously, the, the, the whole two week thing is an environment making challenge. So the more you can kind of involve, you know, kind of making technology, the better. Yes. So you should do for this, but um, if you're from a purely invention standpoint, it depends, is the, the answer. Um, it's best not to tell people they thank you for that Jude um, hinders idea generation if you tell people um, okay so these are really some really great feedback coming into the chats years of teaching has taught you that great Jude yeah no one likes to share their ideas you think they're silly but they're not silly they're absolutely not silly is the form um, to gather information or a sign up sheet uh, Beatrice, Beatrice it isn't actually a sign up sheet we're going to put out next week uh, forms for actually joining the challenge the uh, the form as you say is ready to gather information we just really you know we'd really really like to know kind of who you all are not your actual names and everything but you know, and what your interests are and, and roughly what your experience are. So it can it can really help us. But it, it, it's all completely anonymous. So don't worry, you won't be providing any names or email addresses or anything. Uh, Rachel, Keisha's slideshow, I think. Keisha, can, can you make it available and we can put it up? Yeah, so I'm going to add in the bits that everyone else shared with me because I think you all added some nice bits in there and then you, you will have access to my slideshow, yeah. And Rachel, of course, that we'll also put up a recording of this session later. Yeah, sorry that for all the screen mirroring issues, um, it won't be the prettiest, will it? Uh, if I can just say something to, uh, with everyone who's left on here, um, I, I should have said it at the beginning, and I'll be repeating it tomorrow. But um, unfortunately, uh, we've had one cancellation, uh, which is for the event on Monday. Uh, which was going to be um, Alina um, with a team um, of kids who just competed in a big AI challenge and, and, and won it, and we're going to talk about that. Sadly, at the last minute, um, they were told they had to do exams on Monday afternoon, yeah. so uh, so they can't do it. So we really apologise for that. So at the moment, that event is cancelled, um, but then it gives you more time to think. I mean, you've then got um, Ollie on Thursday doing Arduino, David on Friday doing Make Microbit, and then on Monday we're having a second Arduino session. And then on next Wednesday, we're going to have a big community discussion that anyone can come and just talk about their ideas and, and we'll have people. Keisha, I don't know if you'll be available at all on Wednesday if, uh, if anyone's got any questions, or uh, I think um, Ollie and, and Tanya and, and David will, will, will definitely be available from the making side. and. I don't know, Keisha, if you would be as well? or On the first, yeah, yeah. I'll look at what time it is online just to put it in my calendar. But yeah, I'll be available for questions. Brilliant. So so we'll really try and kind of grow that session a bit. And then 
So many apologies about Monday, but you know, please do come to us on Wednesday after Ollie's second session on Tuesday. And then, you know, if you've got kind of further questions, you want to really refine your ideas, we'll, we'll try and help you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Great. I think the questions have stopped. Um, so thank yep. you so much for um, having me today. And I'm sorry that we ran over and I hope that you continue um, using that process to, to come up with ideas and solve problems. Um, and we'll make, make the slides available online. Thanks, Andrew. It's very kind of you. Thanks, Gabrielle. That's great. Keisha, thank you so much. That was thank really, you. really interesting. I really enjoyed that. Um, oh, great. Did you build your own, Richard? You build your own. Oh, okay. Well, I have some ideas. You have some ideas. <laughs> <laughs> great. Thanks, Michael. Appreciate it. Thanks, Sahar. See you all tomorrow. All right, I'm going to get off so that people are encouraged to sign out as well. Okay, thanks, Rachel. Bye, Patrick. I, I don't know how to leave. <laughs> oh, oh, the hamburger menu. At the oh, top. there it is. I found yeah. it. I always kick you out, but that seems really good. Bye bye. bye Richard, I'm going to uh, stop the recording now and kill this, okay?
Richard? Okay. Hi, Michael. I'm here. Hi, bud. I'm going to kill the recording now. <laughs>